Scourge Runner Chariots, an extremely fast, agile, hard to catch chariot unit. They are light, they are swift, they can dodge artillery and missiles, and also spell projectiles. Just a very annoying anti large tool for any monster factions to deal with. If you don't have any nets or slows, you have no chance to bog them down in melee combat, as even if you send in cavalry, they can probably push through their combat with the high chariot mass. And as the Norskin player right here, we simply can't catch them up in straight up melee fight. As the Savage Northmen are so used to rushing into melee combat against each other, they forgot to learn how to catch those who avoid melee at all costs and kite them to death. The anti-large missiles with the high damage armor piercing will be a huge pain for us right now and the um, monster units we have will ha be in mortal danger. So what should we do against these chariots? Should we just sit there and eat their shots? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Now this is basically a modification to a single player campaign technique where you send in an agile unit against a superior missile unit, go for a some trailer release, circle around the skies and draw out their ammo prematurely, exhausting their firepower so they cannot shoot your key units. Of course, you can't do that to a human player, but we're gonna use the same mechanic to win us the battle, or at least win us the engagement against the Scourge Runners here, as we will be sending in our hounds and horse masters into combat to eat their shots. Well, not exactly into combat as they're just standing there drawing out the shots from the Scourge Runners and exhausting their ammo. Now from the looks of it, I might be losing this combat as the Scourge Runner Chariots are shooting my Marauder Horse Masters to pieces, one of them already routing, now they're turning fire onto the Chaos Warhounds. However, I would still say I'm winning in this engagement. Now this feature might be less emphasized in the online multiplayer scene, however, in single player campaign, you'll always be reminded that Ammo is balance of power, is an important resources, and if you exhaust your opponent's ammo, you'll have a more likely chance to break their whole army. Now, although we can't force our opponent to shoot and miss like we do to the AI, but we do can force them to shoot at targets that they can't earn back their value. With the ammo of the Scourge Runner chariots being relatively expensive, as they do cost 950 per unit, every ammo they shoot needs to earn back a certain amount of value to recover the amount of balance of power it loses with every volley of ammo spent. And that is why we are sending in hounds and horse masters to pressure these Scourge Runner chariots. When you do some quick math, these Scourge Runner chariots have a maximum of 24 volleys of ammo and each volley contains two shots. Multiply it by three models, that is 144 shots. So pit these stats against a horse masters. They usually need two shots to kill off a single model of horse master. They can probably kill 72 horse masters with every shot landing. But in practice, there's no perfect scenario, there are shots missing, there are sometimes targeting issues, duplicating targets for multiple models, so they're shooting at the same model, wasting multiple shots. In total, I'd give them maybe say 60 kills against horse masters, which costs roughly around the same as themselves. And that's not an impressive performances for these Scourge Runners at all. As the damage dealer of the army, their performance should roughly hit around 1200 or more to be called anything impressive. As given the right targets, their damage potential can be so much more. And that balance of power deficit gets even worse when they're facing off hounds. Throughout the battle in this game, the hounds were chasing them, the Norskin Warhounds, baiting out that anti-large fire into the dirt cheap hounds, which has one third more models than the Marauder Horse Masters at roughly half the cost. Yes, they can kill the hounds with one shot, but they always aim the double shot volley onto the same target. So every time they shoot two shots into the hounds, which is a massive overkill. That means overall with every bit of ammo they unleash into their enemies, they are actually losing the combat as the ammo they fire are not earning back the value they actually worth. Essentially coming to the same effect as wasting their ammo shooting into an enemy that is doing the totally whirly in disguise, avoiding their shots by dodging in the air. Now couple that with all the health drain from the spirit leeches from the death shaman sorcerer, the javelins raining onto the chariots by the horse masters, 
and of course the Warhounds catching up to the um, Scourge Runner chariots occasionally before routing off, dragging down the Scourge Runner chariots in melee combat bit by bit. Even more balance of power is lost in that process as the health of the Scourge Runner chariots, an important indicator of the balance of power, is being damaged. At this point of battle, most of that ammo on the Scourge Runners are spent, unable to do too much damage on the Skin Wolves as the mobility pressure, the screening from the Horse Masters and Warhounds kept these chariots at bay. The Skin Wolves and Wolfric were able to just sit back and guard the infantry, preventing Rakarth and his Manticores to dive down into combat, while the infantry are just dishing out the damage, hacking apart the puny elves. Now of course, there are more stuff going on in this battle other than just the mobility combat between the Hounds, Horse Masters, and the Scourge Runner Chariots. However, this episode of How to Multiplayer will be focusing solely on the Scourge Runner Chariot countering. We'll just quickly go through the rest of the combat as the Norskin army is just mopping up the battlefield at this point. The infantry, the berserkers and marauders, with the help of some real charging from the skin wolves, are wrecking all those manticles and the infantry of the dark elves. They are basically on a mass exodus at this point. Scourge Runner chariots, exhausting all their ammo, will have to engage in melee combat, but with all that Marauder Horse Masters still having javelins to throw, chipping away the health of Rakarov on his Black Dragon, and also kiting out any mobility that might get close to them, it's safe to say the High Elves is impossible to make a comeback and turn the tables. And it seems that today the Drukis are the ones being enslaved instead of the usual other way round. So in the post battle screen, when you look at the Scourge Runner chariots, you can see that none of them earn back their value here. Being put on fire at will, forced to shoot their ammo into the less expensive mobility here, the Warhounds and the Horse Masters, a lot of their damage potential is wasted despite expanding all their ammo throughout the whole battle. In comparison, the Norsekin Warhounds, none of them really earn back their value either, but with all those shots absorbed by this cheap Warhound unit, they are actually generating value in that alternative way. The rest of my opponent's army didn't really earn back too much value either, as the aerial units were being kept in the skies as my skin wolves were well protected with the support of Wolfric the Wanderer there, just standing around ready to pounce on these monsters once they dare land on the ground. The infantry wise, the Dark Elves got wrecked as well, as the Berserkers were able to clean up a lot of their infantry, and the Marauder infantry generally just trades better into the Dark Elf low tier units. Now before we end the video, let's go into Skaven Laboratory, just to look at how the balance of power gets tipped when you expand your ammo onto cheap targets. So here we are at the Skaven Laboratory here, I made some modifications, as one of them is a mod that allows you to use regular units as the Lord of the army. And the second modification is gonna be in the leadership. I doubled their leadership so that these dogs, despite getting shot at and taking severe damage from the Scourge Runners, won't run away. Now let's fast forward a bit and just get and see how the balance of power shifts throughout the whole combat. You can see that as the dogs are taking damage, their balance of power is losing. However, as time goes by and as more ammo is expanded, dipping into the last bit of their ammo reserves, the balance of power tilted back in favor of the Chaos Warhounds. Now the dogs, most of them having more than half HP left, I actually did a little bit of quick math behind the scenes, and they still have roughly 58% of their HP. While the Scourge Runner Chariot's full HP but ammo -less. Warhounds still have 58% of their HP left, so let's assume they still have 58% of their balance of power. While the Scourge Runner Chariot's without any ammo, is roughly occupying 40% of the balance of power bar. So a safe guess is that the ammo occupies 50% of the Scourge Runner Chariot's balance of power. So that means a Scourge Runner Chariot without ammo is half dead to the balance of power. Now for any other unit spending half their HP just to kill off some chaff, unless they are chaff themselves, otherwise I would say it's absolutely not worth it. Say Great Stack Knights spending half their HP only to kill off like two Hound units, that's not worth it at all. And the fact that Skirt Runner Chariots losing most of their DPS ability after losing all their ammo makes the situation even less favorable for them. Now combined with normal combat damage like missiles, spells, or melee grinds, 
A Scourge Runner doesn't occupy that much balance of power in the late game. So as long as you keep your balance of power high by conserving your valuable troops, then you will be in a pretty good position. And the best way to do it is to absorb the ammo with cannon fodder. Now of course your opponent might just turn off fire at will and conserve their ammo, not shooting at your chaff, but that means that they would need to put more micro into selecting the targets to shoot at and also microing the Scourge Runner chariots. Or else they will risk not shooting throughout the battle, not earning any value at all on the Scourge Runner chariots and losing full models of them as they die with all their ammo. To sum up, cheap mobility, especially hounds and cheap skirmishing cavalry are your friend when it comes to dealing with Scourge Runners. And yeah, that's basically it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe to get notified every time I upload a new video covering from topics from wild army builds, battle replays, or multiplayer tips and strategies like this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Lich, signing out.